I have mixed feelings about LiveDrive. It starts with the free trial. You need to enter your credit card information to actually start the trial and activate your account. LiveDrive is, as far as I know, the only contender in the field who really uses this practice. I've been able to cancel the trial in the past really with, without any problems, but you need to really remember <laughs> that you signed up for this service and, well, if you don't want to continue with it and you forget it, well, you have to pay the monthly fee. And, and that's really a shame that they require the credit card up front. But this video review covers essentially the most important aspects of LiveDrive. Um, if you need an even deeper drill down, please do visit my written review right here. And that covers really a few of the mentioned areas and features more in depth that we cannot cover all in one video. Also, there is a complete rundown of 11 of the major cloud backup services that you can access also right here. There are also videos of all the services. There's an, a large article that you can read. And after reading it, I mean, you have a really good overview of the market and know which one to pick for your needs. Now, another factor that bugs me is the unclear plans and pricing model. Well, it's not really unclear, but there are basically, it's a little difficult to, to, to see through. There are three different plans and an ominous briefcase where it's not really clear what it does or where it's included. As I mainly want to test cloud backup in this article or in this video series, I sign up for the backup plan for $8 per month or $84 per year. This plan um, provides you with unlimited cloud backup for one computer. Then there is the Pro Suite, which would include five machines, so five computers, and file synchronization through the so-called briefcase. The thing about this service is that it includes also NAS device support, which is good if you go for the Pro Suite. If you're a video producer or, for example, a graphic designer or anyone who handles a lot of large files and have them on a network at a storage device or multiple external hard drives, LiveDrive and their backup feature and file synchronization can really be a lifesaver for you. So let's look at some of the pros of LiveDrive. First off, as I mentioned before in the intro, you'll get unlimited cloud backup. And that, that sounds really good, no? Um, and it only costs $8 per month. This is a bit more expensive than I would say the industry average if you look at Backblaze or CrashPlan or Acronis. Um, but data centers are located in the EU which should be very good for companies or individuals that really don't want their files or cannot host their files due to legislations in the US. Overall, I did see good transfer speeds with this service and you shouldn't really have a lot of problems even with larger backups in the terabyte, uh, in the ter terabyte realm. So also we need to cover um, the cons in this review so that you can really make an informed decision. Unfortunately, LiveDrive doesn't offer private encryption. Private encryption is obviously something that's, yeah, really become popular among cloud backup services where the user determines, this is you, determines the key and controls the key to your files. And this impacts obviously my ranking of the service a bit negatively because I cannot do the, the personal encryption here. The security settings are a bit ridiculous because you can only make LiveDrive ask you for your password when starting the software and not much else. Unlike Acronis, Backblaze, or iDrive, there is no real-time continuous backup mode available in LiveDrive. Instead, the maximum interval one can set is uh, once every hour. This is enough for most users, but I'm sort of used to continuous backup by now. So, Let's drill a little deeper into the backup process. LiveDrive's backup speed has been amazing in my tests. I started uploading my 10 gigabytes test folder at 8.45 a.m. And at 10.11 a.m., everything was transferred successfully. And that boils down to only one hour and 26 minutes. By far, one of the best results in my tests. So this is an average uh, transfer speed of 23.14 megabit per second with occasional peaks at 92 megabit per second for the upload speed. And that's a pretty good result, LiveDrive. So they performed best with larger files. And 
um, with my smaller test files, speed dipped a little bit to around 5 megabit per second. And you can have an overview of what exact type of files I tested um, in the article that I will leave you right here. So when installing LiveDrive to a new device, it starts backing up immediately the standard Windows media folders like uh, videos, pictures, documents, desktop, etc. And as I want to back up my test folder only, I had to disable the initial backup. So uncheck all the folders I don't want in my selection and drill down to my 10 gigabytes test folder. And the overall process of selecting files is, well, a bit clunky and LiveDrive takes a while to load large folders. They need to parse them somehow in their software and it, it takes a little bit. I like the fact that it shows the actual size of the folder so you always know how much will be backed up eventually. Users don't have to wait until all files and folders are transferred. Those folders can be accessed through the web panel and LiveDrive stores up to 30 file versions which can also be accessed from the web but unfortunately not on the desktop. So, and there is a, well, what they call a preview feature, um, but unfortunately previewing of PowerPoint or Microsoft Word documents is missing. Certain types of audio and video files can be streamed directly, um, like MP3s and MP4s, but the majority of my JPEG files would show in the preview window, but for some of the larger ones, I simply couldn't generate a, a correct uh, preview. I don't know if it's because of larger files or if it only shows smaller files. I don't know, it just didn't work. Overall, I had also a little bit of a hard time figuring out what the exact status of my backup was and which files in particular were being transferred at the moment. So the only thing that's essentially available is an overall backup status that shows you um, the percentage of files that, that's been transferred, uh, but in an overall standpoint. And you cannot drill down into individual files that are being transferred to the cloud. Now, let's look at file restoration. This is obviously a critical step in every cloud backup software because you need to get your files back fast in case of a disaster. File restoration with LiveDrive is a quite unspectacular event. Finally, LiveDrive got rid of forcing the user to download and install and set up an extra app for file restores like in previous versions. Now, everything works from within the application. It's very smooth. You just have to uh, switch to the restore tab and essentially select folders and files um, from your uploaded files in your cloud backups. Unfortunately, there is no way to directly restore previous versions of folders, but users can choose if they want to restore files in the same location or into a new folder. For example, you could create a new folder on the desktop and then restore all the files into it. LiveDrive will then look for existing files and prompt users whether or not to overwrite and add a new copy of that file. Funny enough, the restore took a little bit longer than the backup and again large files were handled better than the smaller ones. As you can see in the bandwidth diagram, I uh, started the restore process at around 10.30 and LiveDrive finished it at 12.20. So a good one hour and 40 minutes, which is certainly not bad uh, for 10 gigabytes and if you need files after a hard drive meltdown. Download peaked at around 60 megabit per second, but averaged out to about 7.84 megabits per second. Now, I obviously also tested LiveDrive's mobile app for Android and honestly, I wasn't really impressed. Very few mobile apps really shine in the cloud backup space. Most of them seem like a, an afterthought and LiveDrive is unfortunately no exception here. LiveDrive doesn't offer automatic cloud backup of images or videos on your smartphone like Carbonite or iDrive do. Users can browse their backups, but 
they can't really create a, a shared link inside the LiveDrive app, LiveDrive app. If you hit the share button, LiveDrive essentially downloads the file to your smartphone and then it will look through your installed apps on the smartphone to share it with somebody. Now, file previews are also very rudimentary as well. The, the only real preview that works is for JPEG files, but of course, forget about raw images from your Canon or Nikon DSLR, and even PDF files couldn't be previewed in their app. You can add MP3 and uh, WAV files to a playlist and stream them from there, and that did work fine for me in my tests, but honestly, in terms of Spotify, I mean, who really needs this service? I was impressed how fast LiveDrive transferred files to and from the cloud, which puts them into the upper echelon in terms of speed. They could still learn a lot on the security front from, for example, Spider Oak, Acronis True Image Cloud, and CrashPlan. There is, as I said before, no private or end-to-end -end encryption key for users to manage. You have to entrust LiveDrive essentially with your data and that they handle it well. LiveDrive gives users a fairly generous free trial, but requires submission of credit card details to do so, and they will deduct a small amount of your credit card. None of the other services that offer free trials will ask users for a credit card, so you may want to think twice here. Overall, you have to make sure to sign up for the right plan, and you have to ask yourself, do you want only the backup version or are you looking for file synchronization and sharing and, and online storage as well? And the Pro Suite gives users generous unlimited storage for up to five computers and also NAS, but comes obviously at a higher price tag than say, for example, Acronis. Make sure you really check what your requirements are and also do check our comparison charts in the article. In some cases, it can be more affordable to sign up for two different providers. One that is really specialized in the area of cloud backup, for example, Backblaze, CrashPlan, or iDrive, and then sign up for a real dedicated synchronization and sharing service, like for example, our recommended uh, Sync.com that also focuses a lot on security and ease of use. Well, Thanks for sticking with me during this live drive review. If you like this video, make sure to give it your thumbs up, as always, and subscribe to this channel so you won't miss a thing. Do check out my comprehensive article on the 11 cloud backup services right here as well. So I really hope to see you next time around. Thank you guys for watching my videos. As I've already mentioned, this is a video series of 11 of the best cloud backup services. If you think this provider is something for you, you can sign up for a free trial by clicking the button right here. If you still couldn't decide, make sure to watch my other videos from the playlist and you can access them by clicking on the logos here on this screen or you can check out the links in the description box below. Thank you very much for watching and remember to subscribe. Bye.